Here we have a Briggs and Stratton. This is a 5500. And I am trying to turn or convert this into a push start so that my wife can actually start this thing up. I already converted it to work with natural gas over here. So the next thing is to upgrade the starting mechanism. A few parts we need. Um, Obviously, I want a battery on mine. Some people like to just be able to bring a battery out with them and hook it up. I want the battery in it, and I want the push start to go with. Uh, here is your starter motor. This is, I designed this for the battery, actually, to be a compartment. And I'm going to attach this underneath the... Uh, the generator in a certain spot and i'll show you where that's going to go um got a trickle charger which we're going to adjust and rewire because this is going to be the actual charger for the machine and for that battery over there yeah oh i think we're going to need well I'm definitely going to need this this is called a flywheel puller i'm going to take off the old flywheel because i found out after i removed the shroud that it does not have teeth and if it does not have teeth, you cannot do this. So you have to replace the flywheel and put one on with teeth. Also, you have to double check your motor. Make sure you have those two little bolts, holes right there. Otherwise, you will not be able to mount your starter motor to it. I forgot to mention before, it's always best practice to undo the spark plug before you start taking everything apart. So keep that in mind. All right, just took a little bit of it apart, nothing crazy. Um, just grabbed the uh, gas tank off, very simple. All I had to do is just undo this little clamp by uh, squeezing it together, moving it back, and wiggling it off. It comes right off of this little spout down here. Not that difficult at all. Then these are just four bolts holding that on, that's off. This was four little uh, screws holding that on. I can't uh, separate it from the stator because it's really not too, uh, it's not as easy to do. So I'm going to leave it as is and leave it on the side. It's not going to be in my way. There was a plate over here and this is where I'm mounting the battery to so that it sits right under here in this area. And the plate is now over here and we're going to drill some holes and mount it so that it doesn't move. Okay, holes are drilled. Uh, just a little quick information if you have to ever drill through steel or any type of plate that's pretty hard. It's good to start with like say a nail set and you take and you hit it and then you give a little indent to where you're drilling. That'll stop your drill bit from wandering away. And you want to finish off probably with one of these things. It's called like a reamer and that'll make the holes uh, finish a lot smoother. Now when you put this thing back together, just remember, the generator tends to shake and move, kind of like John Lovitz in The Wedding Singer. So I like to use something like a thread locker. That's what this red stuff is right here and uh, right there. You don't have to use red. You could probably get away with blue, but uh, I use that so that these things will not come undone in the middle of uh, it running. Here's the flywheel without the gears on it. This is the original one that was on it. This is the uh, flywheel puller. The nut that's on it is actually inch and a quarter. So I use the inch and a quarter with the, uh, uh, what's it called, an impact wrench. Just one of these guys and comes right off, no problem. Now what you have to do is you put the nut right back on, but you don't seat it all the way. You give it a little bit so that this thing can seat right in the middle. You turn this uh, about, I don't know, until it's about a half inch to an, uh, an inch in on both sides. And then you work these nuts one by one. And uh, you just do like quarter turn, quarter turn, back and forth. And then what eventually happens is this thing will pop and becomes loose. And that's it. That's how you get the flywheel off. While the flywheel is off, we're going to want to remove this little section right over here. It's actually outlined perfectly. So I guess this is like a standard engine that they make and you either put one or the other on. So let's get rid of this thing next. All right, this came out pretty quick with a pair of vice grips and just one hit pops right out and we're going to use a file to uh, clean up the edge. So the new flywheel is on, installed, uh, magneto is back in place, um, 
You got the starter motor on the side, ready to go. I torqued this to 110 foot-pounds, uh, as I read on somebody else's uh, Briggs. The problem was getting this thing to stop spinning, and I did not have a proper tool for that. So I ended up locking it between one of these ridges and, uh, what's it called, and the chassis itself. So I got the solenoid, and right now I have the negative terminal on the battery. And I've got a green. Uh, this is for a recharge port. So I have the three wires on the negative. I have green, I have black, I have the recharge port negative, and then I have two wires on the positive, not hooked up yet, obviously. Uh, but I've got a white wire, because I didn't have red, and the red one for the recharge port. Now, in perfect world, this would be all black, this would be all red. I just don't have the wires for it, so I'm using what I... Little update, I didn't like that uh, the starter motor had an exposed gear, so I 3D printed this guy right here, and I attached it to the plastic shroud up here with the three plastic screws. It's just there to cover it, because I don't want it to see the gears or have anyone stick their hands close to that gear or whatnot. So we're starting to drill a hole for the starter switch right now. Now uh, this, the two bolts coming through here uh, have the solenoid and I'm gonna put the starter switch right over here. After cleaning the hole with a deburring tool, uh, this is the final installation, what it looks like. And this is what it'll look like on the outside. So here's the back of the switch and the way it's hooked up. It looks a little confusing right now, but here I have power coming in from the battery terminal. This power comes out and actually, if you follow along, comes right to the switch. The momentary switch jumps to the other side. The other side hits this small little guy on the solenoid, which uh, this is the ground from the battery. So once this completes from power to ground, the uh, solenoid engages, t sending the power from this uh, terminal to this terminal and on down. So she's all back together. And we're ready to give this one a test. I've got the one end from the battery, the green, going right into the uh, ground of the starter. I've got power coming from the solenoid. I've got the button up here. I took off the shroud so you can see. Uh, and the, uh, what's it called? The um, spark plug is still disconnected just for the heck of it. I don't, we're not starting this up inside. I just want to make sure it works. So let's start it up. go we got some turning I like that. and we're gonna try this outside next okay now we got the natural gas hooked up and we're gonna give this thing a go hold on to feed it three seconds one two three let's hold this for three seconds Final test, we're just going to make sure this thing can still start by hand. Nope. You may find that after you put everything together, you may experience that your generator is not going to turn over. You have to double check, and this is important when you do this, and I'll show you the picture of what I mean, what I'm talking about. You have to double check that the behind, right next to where the flywheel is and where it spins, I believe it's called a magneto, but I, I'm probably wrong on that. Regardless, there is two screws on the left side, and those two hold in the contraption that, as the flywheel makes a rotation, sends a spark to the spark plug. Make sure that that contraption is as close as possible to the flywheel, otherwise you may not get a spark on your spark plug. And that's what happened to me when I first started this outside. So I had to take it all apart, double check where, and it turned out that I was just a smidge too far with this, and it ended up becoming an issue that I put it back together and it started working again. So is it worth spending the $200 to put in a starter? Since I plan on keeping this thing as long as it'll last, yeah, to me it's worth it. It's worth having the convenience of it as I get older because one thing's for sure, I'd like things to be easier as I get older, not harder. So having a push-button starter makes things a whole lot easier when it comes to a generator.